There's a lot of discussion today as to whether or not there's water on Mars. And of course, if there's water on Mars, then people claim that means that there's likely, a likelihood that there's life on Mars. Bijan, you're a great person to discuss this question with uh, because you're a physicist, you're a Christian, but you are involved in uh, ex research looking to detect life on other planets outside the Earth. So what is your assessment of this claim that there's water on Mars and the likelihood of life being on Mars? Um, there is some recent news, uh, as you said, that, that, that points to there having being flowing water on Mars. But um, as far as <coughs> life on Mars is concerned, there's at least two or three things we have to keep in mind. Number one is that for a planet to support life, it has to be in what is called a habitable zone. The habitable zone is where water can be uh, it can be continuously liquid for over a long period of time. That is not the case. Mars is not really in the habitable zone of our star. The other thing we have to remember is, um, you know, there was a movie that just came out called The Martian, and he had to wear a spacesuit on Mars. Why does he have to wear a spacesuit? Because the atmospheric pressure on Mars is 1% of the atmospheric pressure of the Earth. And that 1% uh, pressure um, what is in that atmosphere is almost all carbon dioxide. And after you take away the carbon dioxide, and after you take away the nitrogen, and after you take away the argon, you get like 0.1% oxygen, almost no oxygen in, in Mars. So it's not in a habitable zone. There is almost no oxygen in the atmosphere, and there's almost no atmosphere, just enough atmosphere, just like in the movie, to cause a lot of trouble, but not anything to do any good. So, so those are at least some of the problems. But let's pretend for the moment that water was just flowing on Mars. Mars was actually not at two astronomical units, but at 1.2 astronomical units. And suppose for the moment that that would not cause dynamical problems for the Earth. Then what? Well, water, uh, this, this thinking that somehow you just add water and life just shows up, of course, is awfully glib because what characterizes life is far more than water. Water is necessary, but it is just far from sufficient for, for life to exist. So in the end, I think what, we, you know, what I would say about life on Mars is this, that uh, could there be ever found uh, organisms on Mars? There might be one mechanism. The solar wind could carry um, some, some, uh, some life from Earth mm -hmm. outward uh, to, to Mars and seed it. Uh, could it survive? I doubt it. Um, I doubt that it could survive. It's, the, the planet has no magnetosphere and has those other problems that we're talking about. So even if you were to rehabilitate Mars, because of its lack of atmosphere, uh, planet and magnetosphere, by the way, all of that will be lost. So Mars is unfortunately sort of doomed not to have life. So, um, yeah, but, but had it not been the case, I would say still you really have the deeper question of what, what, how does life c come to be and uh, the, um, we've now had, you know, 100 years of trying to come up with a naturalistic explanation uh, of life. And for the most part, we've actually uh, not gotten closer. We've actually gotten farther. And what seems to be the case is that there are aspects to life that are not even included in a simple materialist partic particle-oriented um, picture. And, and until we address that, we wouldn't even be able to properly ask the question. For now, we would just have to say life um, cannot be in any way uh, spontaneously generated. So put all the water you want, make it nice and warm, and throw in all the favorite chemicals, and nothing will happen of significance.